My name is Emma Smith, and I'm 30 years old. Utilizing my certification as a licensed psychologist, I work as an online counselor primarily from my home. My husband, Michael Williams, is also 30 years old and works for a fairly large pharmaceutical company. We met through work and have been married for four years. Two years ago, Michael pleaded with me to remodel his mother's house so that we could create a home where we could live with his mother, Karen. Ever since losing his father four years ago, Michael has been quite attached to his mother and insisted on cohabitation. Ignoring my wishes, he began the remodeling project. Living with Karen was far from enjoyable during that time, but I endured her constant criticism while trying to make things work. To my surprise, I discovered that Michael was having an affair. To make matters worse, his mistress was pregnant. He promptly asked for a divorce. Determined to move forward after learning about his mistress's pregnancy, I knew I had to leave this house. I set a condition. Can I take everything I purchased? Yes, yes, take it all. Michael, on the other hand, dismissed my belongings as dirty used items. True to his words, I moved out with all the furniture and appliances I had bought. As the preparations for my move were complete, Michael and Karen came to inspect. The scene they witnessed was an immaculate, empty space. Their faces turned pale. For Michael, who is sidelined, the cost of the furniture and appliances I had purchased was beyond his means. If you're upset, then prepare everything with your own money. I thought. How did we end up like this after just four years of marriage? I want to unravel this story and discuss it further. Mr. Williams, thank you for your hard work. I greeted Michael Williams, who delivered medications to the psychiatric clinic where I worked. We engaged in this routine conversation each day. Not at all. It's part of the job. In this scorching heat, isn't it tough to drive around? Is the air conditioning blasting in your car? I consistently asked Michael questions like this, prolonging our conversations. He chuckled and explained. Well, my old compact car loses power when I turn on the AC. I enjoyed these trivial exchanges but I heard that Michael would be reassigned to a different person. If that happened, I wouldn't see him anymore. Summoning my courage, I decided to invite him. Mr. Williams, would you like to grab a drink sometime? That moment of bravery would eventually lead to our marriage. Michael worked for a major pharmaceutical company, delivering medications to hospitals and other clients. As a counselor in the psychiatric clinic, I worried about the increasing number of patients seeking help in our ever-changing world. Uh, I know this isn't the right time to say it. I understand that. But I can't keep it in. Emma, will you marry me? Huh? Are you okay? That's not the kind of line you should be saying right after your father's passing. It's not like I'm expecting a romantic proposal, but, now. Michael was deeply shocked by his father's death. Understandably so, his father, a carpenter, had tragically slipped and fallen on a job site. It was sudden. I regret that my dad won't get to see his grandchild. He loved children so much. And I don't want to leave any regrets for my mom. Emma, let's get married and create our own family. Although the proposal came from a place of vulnerability due to his father's passing, I felt genuinely happy. However, little did I know that I was about to embark on days of enduring the constant criticism from my eternal adversary, my mother-in-law. Oh, hello there. What's with keeping the curtains closed on such a beautiful day? Karen frequently barged into our apartment, which was just a 10-minute walk from her house. I understood her loneliness, but since she dined with us every evening and then returned home, 
I often struggled with meal planning. And Emma, you mentioned something about working from home, right? But earning a measly $70 doing odd jobs won't cut it. Instead of that, why not prepare more dishes for dinner? Mikey comes home exhausted every day. Karen had a habit of referring to Michael as a Mikey. Perhaps that's why both his relatives and neighbors also used the same nickname for him. Mom, what I do isn't quite the same as traditional piecework. You've probably heard of it, but nowadays, we can conduct meetings and classes online using computers. Haven't you come across terms like Zoom and online? Always belittling me like that. Emma, you're almost 30, you're a respectable lady. Karen never seems to grasp the concept of online counseling, no matter how many times I explain it. She stubbornly refuses to acknowledge anything she's unfamiliar with. She won't even consider learning something new. I choose to work from home because I don't want to neglect household chores. Forget about that. Why don't you hurry up and have a child? After all, that's your role, Emma. Your job is just listening to other people's problems. I could do that too. Stop acting all high and mighty. I'm home. Karen rushed to the entrance to greet Michael. Since her only son, Michael, lived with his parents until he married me, and now with his father gone, Karen must feel lonely. I understand that, but honestly, her frequent visits can be quite bothersome. Today, I made hamburg steaks that Mikey loves with Emma. Don't worry, I've drilled into Emma the secret sauce recipe for the Williams family's hamburg steaks. Emma used to think that mixing Worcestershire sauce and ketchup was enough for hamburg steak sauce. Emma should learn proper cooking from mom. Remember when we first got married? She'd put Worcestershire sauce on fried eggs. That's not normal, it should be salt. Emma's taste buds need some serious fixing. I haven't been having decent meals either. By the way, Mikey, you've lost weight since getting married, haven't you? I wanted to shout that it wasn't true. Lately, Michael had been a bit overweight, and during his company's health checkup, he was cautioned about high cholesterol levels. So, I've been mindful of calories and carbohydrates while preparing meals. Thanks to that, Michael had healthily shed some pounds. We'd been living this way for two years when one day, Michael dropped a bombshell. I'm thinking of remodeling my mom's house. It's quite old, you know. The plumbing is terrible and it's sweltering in summer and freezing in winter. Despite not being in the countryside, the layout is inconvenient. So, I thought, why not remodel it and move in ourselves? Huh? Was I hearing correctly? He meant living with his mother, right? Paying rent for a place just 10 minutes from my mom's house seems ridiculous. If we're going to live there, we might as well renovate it for better comfort. Besides, we've talked about wanting our own home in the future. When we have kids, we'll need a nursery. And if we live with mom, she can help take care of them, right? But where will the money come from? Remodeling the entire house won't be cheap. Is Michael planning to pay off a loan for it? There's a small inheritance left by my dad, so I plan to use that as a down payment. The monthly mortgage should be manageable for me, it'll likely extend until I'm 65. I wondered if this would work out. Since marrying Michael, I've been surprised by his relatively low salary. Back when I worked as a counselor in the psychiatric clinic, I earned significantly more. We'll figure it out somehow. So, that's settled. Well, there's a condition. I want a dedicated workspace for my counseling. Online counseling? 
You only need a computer for that. Handling personal information requires a focused environment. Even though neither mom nor you fully understand counseling, it's an incredibly sensitive job. People come to me desperately seeking help, hoping to break free from their current situations. Guiding them toward a better outcome is my mission. I can't approach it half-heartedly. Feels a bit like fortune-telling, doesn't it? Fortune-telling and counseling are completely different. Well, okay, I get it. Let's ask the designer. With those words, Michael's childhood home underwent a transformation. As the remodeling neared completion in a few weeks, Michael suddenly remembered. Oh, I forgot something crucial. The new house needs suitable furniture and appliances. I'll leave that to Emma, who has great taste. What? You're just springing this on me. I never agreed to that. I retorted. It was clear he had planned all along to have me foot the bill for furniture and appliances. His feigned surprise was poorly executed. I wanted to call him out on it. As the Williams family, we've poured everything we have into this remodel. You will be living in this house for a long time, so it's only fair you share the burden. Honestly, you earn way more than I do. Michael explained. As a husband, he must feel a sense of inadequacy and shame about earning less than his wife. Since the house was already complete, I couldn't refuse. Perhaps I could see it as an opportunity to furnish the place according to my taste. And so, the new home was finished. This house feels rather cold. I intentionally kept it unified in black and white. I thought simplicity would work well. Karen will probably fill it with her own belongings soon anyway. She's terrible at tidying up and can't bear to throw things away. So, there's a chance it could turn into a cluttered mess if we're not careful. Emma and I don't get along at all. I wanted a warmer home with more wood accents. This just doesn't feel cozy. You'll get used to it as you live here. Is dinner ready yet? Michael's been coming home early lately. If dinner isn't ready by 7 p.m., we won't make it. And there you are, casually browsing on your computer. Making a whole separate office for yourself. How entitled. If I could just say that the house would fall apart without my work, maybe I'd feel a bit better. Karen doesn't know that Michael's salary hasn't been coming in. Michael may have been making excuses for his lateness, but I'm certain something is going on. I'm just too afraid to ask. Hey, Emma, why don't you see a doctor? What is she talking about? I mean, it's been four years since you got married, and you still don't have children. It's strange. I got a referral to a fertility specialist. My friend's daughter-in-law started fertility treatment and ended up having twins. So, Emma, why not get tested once? Well, then Michael should get tested too. Infertility isn't just a female issue, there's male infertility as well. You know, Emma, you should learn to be less reserved and more humble. Listening to people's problems with that attitude is just a scam. You never know when you might get sued. This kind of exchange happens all the time. Karen should spend her time on hobbies or travel instead. Being home all day probably leads to these arguments. I'm thinking of giving my mom a trip as a gift. One night, Michael, fresh out of the bath, blurted out. Mom's turning 60. She looks young but she's been experiencing various aches and pains. Has she been to the hospital recently? Oh, she went to the orthopedic clinic because of her back pain. She got some pain patches and dramatically wrapped herself in bandages. 
Please make a reservation at a restaurant in Chinatown for her 60th birthday celebration. And at that time, I want to give her a travel voucher worth $700. Why should I do it? She's not my mom. Surely she'd be happier if her beloved son prepared it, rather than some unwanted daughter-in-law. You often don't understand your position as a daughter-in-law. Just because you earn a little more than I do, you're not the ruler of this house. It's mom. Arguing with Michael is always about Karen. If he's this much of a mama's boy, I might as well become a bystander. One day, amidst planning Karen's 60th birthday celebration, Karen returned home in a cheerful mood. She had been out for tea at a neighbor's house, and six hours had passed since then. Should I cook dinner tonight? Something good must have happened. She's so straightforward and easy to read. Karen busied herself preparing cheese fondue, waiting for Michael to return. Don't be surprised, Mikey. Samantha has come back. As soon as Michael arrived, Karen was excited at the doorstep. Once we sat at the dining table, Karen abandoned the cheese fondue and started sharing various updates with Michael. Naturally, I took charge of serving. What? Samantha? It's been five or six years, right? She got married. Wasn't she just 22 back then? And she hasn't come back once? Well, everyone was strongly against Samantha's marriage. She eloped, you see. And then, she returned with her three-year-old son. He's just adorable. Samantha is a mother? Wow, I can't imagine it. So why did she come back? Did her mom and dad forgive her? Well, she got divorced. That's why she came back to her parents' home, which is quite intimidating. She must have been really desperate. But Samantha is still as cheerful and lively as ever. And she's become quite beautiful. So, she'll be staying at her parents' home for a while? I'd like to meet her too. I told Samantha, if she'd like, come to visit with her son tomorrow. Samantha wants to meet Mikey's wife. Wow, I honestly thought it would be troublesome. I have no memories of that unfamiliar house, and now I have a mission to get along with the neighbors. Samantha was my childhood friend who used to live nearby. He explained briefly. The next day, Samantha really came to visit with her three-year-old son, Liam. Samantha stared at me and smiled meaningfully. Emma, could you play with Liam a bit? Karen and Samantha were engrossed in chatting, leaving me to deal with the energetic Liam. It was honestly quite challenging. He ran around the house, got bored with the toys he brought, and gleefully doodled on our wallpaper. It still doesn't quite sink in that Samantha is a mother. You used to be such a crybaby. Enough, Mikey. What are you talking about? Samantha and Liam were naturally having dinner at our house. Of course, I was the one who cooked. From my perspective, Mikey getting married was surprising too. You never seemed interested in marriage. So, the fact that you got married means you must have been really smitten with your wife. Well, you know, it's partly for mom's sake. I wanted to put her at ease. Plus, dad passed away recently, and both mom and I were feeling down. I thought having a family with marriage and children would be enjoyable. Despite not having much to talk about with me, three of them seemed to have endless conversations late into the night. I became Liam's guardian during this time. From then on, Samantha started visiting our house frequently. The challenge was that she often left Liam in my care. 
I still had counseling work to attend to. Excuse me. I also have work, so I can't watch Liam constantly. And while I'm working, please make sure Liam doesn't enter the room. I hear counseling pays well. Charging over $70 per hour per person. Seems like quite a ripoff, doesn't it? Just doing counseling for five people a day would make it $350. It's a good business. Guess having a college degree makes a difference. Samantha said it with a hint of sarcasm. Even though we'd only recently met, Karen was firmly on her side, so Samantha directed her sharp comments at me. Hey, Mikey, how about going to the aquarium together on your next day off? Liam really wants to go. Sure, Liam is quite attached to me. Gradually, Michael's time was increasingly spent with Samantha and Liam. At first, they used to go out with Liam as a trio, but lately, Michael leaves Liam with me and goes out with Samantha alone. Is it considered infidelity to go on a date with a childhood friend, bypassing his wife? Well, it's fine if you want to go out with Samantha, but could you take Liam along too? I conceded this much. You know I work from home, right? Running around, making noise, and entering rooms without permission, those things can be problematic given my profession. My work revolves around patience. Yuka hindrance, maybe you should go work outside. You always use your job as an excuse. If it bothers you that much, why not quit? You don't need to work from home. The house isn't a workplace. If having family around is s. Is it okay? Even if I work outside? You said you wanted me to do at-home work that balances household chores and my job. I've never slacked off on housework, and I manage my work just fine. Ugh, you're so stubborn. Samantha wouldn't nitpick like this. She's busy raising her child, so it's okay for her to help out. Honestly, Emma, you're narrow-minded and cold. By this point, the Williams family had been completely taken over by Samantha. Simultaneously, Michael and Samantha had grown increasingly close. One day, I accidentally overheard a conversation between Michael and Samantha. They were openly engaged in an affair right under our roof. Mikey has always been on my side. A true hero, just like in the old days. Even as adults, Mikey remains my hero. Samantha's voice, sweet and syrupy, was something she never showed in front of me. Michael, with his smug expression, seemed almost repulsive. Samantha, you've been through a lot. Who would have thought you were dealing with domestic violence? Must have been tough. It was. I couldn't rely on my family, and I didn't know what to do. Liam was still so young. If I were a more independent woman, I might have escaped and found work. But I lacked education and qualifications. I couldn't muster the courage to be a single mother. I wish I'd come back sooner. Then Mikey wouldn't have been married. Men are easily deceived by words like these. Michael, too, seemed oblivious to any wrongdoing, becoming even more empathetic in his counseling role. Mikey was my first love. It was the moment Michael fell in love. Despite living nearby, Samantha had boldly infiltrated the Williams family. Samantha, I had no idea you were such a great cook. I'm impressed. Considering someone's usual half-hearted cooking, the deliciousness really hits home. Cutting corners is disappointing. I try to prepare dishes from scratch, starting with the basics. Even the soup stock involves simmering vegetables to extract flavor. But, to be honest, 
Samantha's cooking tends to be calorie-laden and brown. Karen seems to constantly pit Samantha and me against each other, hoping to favor Samantha. She even went so far as to say, It would have been nice if Samantha had become our daughter-in-law. However, if Samantha were to marry Michael, Karen would likely torment her as a daughter-in-law. For now, Samantha's return is merely that of a childhood friend, and Karen is being kind. Regardless of who Michael's wife is, Karen won't be pleased. Emma is intelligent. You know. I've heard that smart people tend to have difficulty conceiving. Exactly. She can't have children. At that point, she's disqualified as a wife. She always uses work as an excuse, but isn't it mostly household chores that Emma has to take care of? Mikey might get tired of Emma soon. Then, he'll turn to Samantha, just like that. Samantha and Karen laugh. I wonder if there's any point in me being in this house anymore. It's clear that Michael and Samantha's relationship has Karen's full approval. Everyone's gathered here for one reason. It's about Emma and me. On that day, Michael called me, Karen, and Samantha together for an important conversation. Samantha is pregnant. Well, Samantha, you've done well. When's your due date? Which maternity clinic are you planning to go to? If it's a maternity clinic, I recommend Brown's Obstetrics and Gynecology, which took care of Mikey. They're great. Karen's excitement is palpable. Emma, I'm sorry. It's because of this. Divorce proceedings can be surprisingly straightforward. With Samantha expecting a child, I have no choice but to consider divorce as my only option. How many months pregnant are you, Samantha? Three months. It seems your belly has grown quite a bit for that stage. The doctor was surprised that it's larger than usual. Maybe because of that, we found out it's a boy at this stage. Emma, you're being unsightly. You're just jealous because you can't have children. In the end, you and Mikey are incompatible in various ways. This is a good opportunity. Without it, Mikey wouldn't be able to break free from you. He's kind-hearted, you know. He's trying not to hurt you. Liam already calls Mikey dad, and if you step back, Emma, it'll be perfect. I promptly filled out the divorce papers, and the next day, Michael submitted both our divorce papers and his marriage papers with Samantha. Quick at work. I still have some belongings here, so I stayed at the Williams house until I found my next place. Seeing triumphant Samantha and cheerful Karen, I can't help but feel irritated. But I've got anger management skills. After all, I'm a certified counselor. Still, I wanted to say something. By the way, can you support her? On your salary? What are you bringing up now? Money? What does money matter? Just because you have some income, you think you can belittle me. This woman always undermines me. Well, you did quit your job, didn't you? Or should I say you were forced to quit? Karen and Samantha looked at Michael with surprise. What do you mean, Mikey? I quit on my own terms. That idiotic company couldn't recognize my abilities. It's a toxic place, and leaving was the right choice. You've been a Deadwood for quite some time now. A whole day without work, it's hell. Even if you get minimum wage for just sitting there. You made a big mistake at work, and they sidelined you. But even then, you never said a word to me or mom. 
Was it embarrassing? That's none of your business. Well, it doesn't matter anymore since we're divorced. Samantha still wants to marry Michael, even in this situation. Samantha hesitated to respond. Perhaps she felt her guess was off the mark. From my perspective, Michael's mental state is quite fragile. The series of events at work might have traumatized him. Samantha, please understand and support Michael, who is struggling mentally. I don't think he'll be able to work for a while. Just my professional opinion as a counselor. It's none of your business. Samantha, Emma is just sore about losing Mikey and trying to drag him down. Emma, if you're only going to say things like that, pack up your things and leave, even if you haven't found your next place. Yes. I'll leave. And I'll take everything I bought. And so, this exchange leads back to the beginning. Michael, Karen, and Samantha looked bewildered at the empty room. We'll figure it out somehow. We can buy furniture and appliances again. Hey, Mikey. Where's that money going to come from? Michael is getting defensive with Karen. Being too extreme, like taking everything, is not normal. That black and white mindset is one of your flaws. Say whatever you want. It doesn't matter to me anymore. Just keep playing nice. Why you keep picking on me? It's jealousy, isn't it? Embarrassing for a 30-year-old. What? I'm not jealous at all. After all, Samantha's child in her belly isn't Michael's. What are you talking about? Fabricating stories is dangerous. Well, how about a DNA test? That would clear things up. Maybe it's time you both realize that you're falling for Samantha's strategy. The child in Samantha's belly is from her previous husband. Samantha noticed her pregnancy after the divorce. But she didn't want to return to her abusive ex. When she was hoping someone would step up and be this child's father, she reunited with you, and you became the target. Michael, being the trusting soul you are, fell right into it. Michael and Karen's expressions changed. Samantha, however, remained unfazed. But the timing of the pregnancy matches. She can't possibly be lying about that. It must be my child, right? Well, if she says it was a premature birth, men wouldn't know. It seems you were well prepared. You married Samantha the day after our divorce, didn't you? And you even adopted Liam as your own. This is Samantha's ultimate goal. She played her cards right with the gullible man. Blood relation doesn't matter to me. Unlike Emma, Samantha doesn't look down on me, and she relies on me. For a man, that's not a bad thing, it's what makes a family's breadwinner. You're desperately defending Samantha, but good luck with your newfound fatherhood. It's not as easy as you think. I retreated from the Williams house after living there for two years. Michael, Karen, and Samantha rented a weekly apartment for the time being. During that period, he intended to buy furniture and appliances, but... I'm sorry, pathetic as it sounds, but I'll struggle with loan repayments going forward. What if we sell the house and use that money to buy a second-hand apartment? Liam is quite mischievous, and the child in my belly is also a boy. I don't like cramped spaces. In an apartment, you can hear children's footsteps, and complaints come from downstairs. Can't we somehow get a detached house? He managed to sell the Williams house, but it was sold for much less than its actual value. At this rate, they won't even qualify for a second-hand apartment, 
let alone a standalone house. So Michael and the others moved into a small public housing unit. Michael, traumatized, is struggling to find a new job. Meanwhile, Samantha gave birth. In the small house, Liam runs around, shouting, and the baby's cries echo through the walls. The Williams family has been completely taken over by Samantha's family. As for me, I've become a popular advice columnist for a magazine. Now, I've purchased my own apartment and set up a counseling room for face-to-face -face sessions. Thankfully, there's a waiting list for appointments. How did you find this story? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.